In the last couple of sections, we started talking about determinants of matrices, and I showed you the row reduction method to find the determinant of a matrix. That's always going to work. Whatever size uh, matrix you have, you can always do row reduction techniques, keeping track of what you have to put out in front of the matrix, negative or, 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 or scalar constant or something, and then multiply by the diagonal elements. You can always do that. But you have to admit, it's a little bit cumbersome because if even for a three by three matrix, depending on what the matrix is, you have several different, you have to recopy the matrix several times to get down and to get it into triangular form. It can take half a page of work or a page of work, depending on what that matrix is. Also, most of the matrices that I teach you have whole numbers. What if your matrix has a bunch of fractions in it? Then multiplying and adding fractions in a bunch of row reduction steps is very, very cumbersome. So what I'm gonna show you here is the way that I like to take determinants of three by three matrices. Outside of teaching you this, what you have to learn in this class, you know, when you're in a class, you have to learn lots of different things. But when I'm sitting down with a pencil and paper and I have to take a determinant of a three by three matrix, this is how I do it. It's something I learned a long time ago, it's stuck with me, and it has saved me many, many times, even faster than typing something into a calculator. Also, I'm gonna give you a little preview in the next section. I'm going to teach you how to take the cross product of two vectors uh, using this method. Uh, and that's just uh, saves you a lot of time too because if you have studied cross product of vectors, you know that the, the formula they give you in the books is really cumbersome and, and kind of long. I can teach you how to take the cross products of two vectors like this. It's exactly the same method that we're learning here. So kind of pay attention, make sure keep it locked in your brain. I promise you this is something you'll use for many years to come. All right, so if we want to find the determinant of a three by three matrix, this will always work. And it's not really a trick, it's really a subset of a much broader uh, technique that I will introduce you to in a few sections from now, but I wanna show you it for a three by three because it's very easy to understand. And plus three by three is the most co uh, common system you're going to come up uh, or encounter. So this is your matrix. Let's say one, two, two, three, one, four, one, two, one. Very common for you to have a matrix like this um, in an actual problem. So let me switch here. It's gonna be a little bit weird, but let me show you. Uh, and once we get through it, uh, I think you'll kind of get the hang of it. Um, the determinant of A is gonna be equal to the following. Notice how your first row is one, two, and two. Basically, we're gonna end up expanding this determinant about that first row. So the first row, the one that you have at the top, is kind of important. So you don't need to rearrange rows or anything, it's just whatever is at the top, that's what you go with. So the determinant is gonna be the first guy here in the first uh, column, the number one. And if you take the number one here and notice that it's a part of this column and it's a part of this row. Mentally, you don't actually scratch it out on your paper, but mentally cover this up and cover this up. So if I cover the, these guys up, what the intersection of the rows and columns here, what's left over? I have a small, what we call a sub matrix, a small two by two matrix in this case, one, four, two, and one, all right? So I have the one here from this guy and I cover up the row in the column that intersects to make that and I say that it's equal to this times the determinant of the sub matrix that's left over, one, four, two, one. And I write it just like this, all right? So it's the first guy times the determinant of the small submatrix that's left over. Now the good thing about it is you know how to take determinants of two by two matrices. That's why this is so easy. Because you know the crisscross method, multiply this way, multiply this way, subtract for a two by two matrix, finding this determinant, you don't have to do any row reduction or anything, you can just write that down because you know what the deter determinant of a two by two matrix is. But we're not done, we've just done the first part. We've We've used the very first element in this top row. Now we have the second. So it's going to be uh, 2, this guy, times the determinant of the submatrix left over when I cross this out and I cross this top row out. You have to cross the intersections there. So cross that row out, cross that row out. You have 3, 4, 1, 1. Make sure you understand that's the submatrix left over. 3, 4, 1, 1. Now, I'm not going to put a minus or a plus here yet. I'll explain why in just a second. But you have, uh, basically, the very first element here times the determinant of the submatrix left over. You have this guy here multiplied by the determinant of the submatrix left over. And then now, finally, we have a 2 times, what do you think we're going to do? Times the determinant of whatever the submatrix is that's left over. So we cover this up 
and we cover this up. We have three, one, one, two. Three, one, one, two. All right, so that's basically it. Now, in order to, to actually do it, you have to figure out what to put it here. The only thing in this method that you have to remember, and you really have to remember it or you're gonna get it wrong, is for the middle element, you have a determinant here, a determinant here, and a determinant here. You have to put a minus sign there, okay? And then you have to put a plus sign for the next element. So it's basically plus, minus, plus this next guy here. And I'll actually explain, remember I'm kind of giving you a little tease. This uh, technique I'm showing you is always bulletproof, it always works, um, but it is a, um, it's a subset of a much broader general procedure. And instead of teaching you the broad general procedure, which is kind of cumbersome to show you all at once, I'm teaching you what you will use constantly throughout your education. So this is what I use all the time. I'm always expanding it about that first row there. This negative sign, it, it basically comes about when I teach you the full glory of the procedure. But for now, all you need to remember is that you always need to put a negative sign for the second term. All right, so let's finish this problem up. This is going to equal, now everything's very easy. We have a one here. Whoops. We have a one here. And then I open a, a bracket or a parentheses to make it easier. One times one gives me one. Four times two gives me eight. So I have one minus eight. I can do this in my head if I want, but I want to make it explicit. Make sure I don't make any mistakes. Minus the two from here. Open up another bracket. I'm doing a crisscross. Three times one is three. Minus four times one is four. Make this a bracket like this. And then I have a plus. The two comes from here. And then I'm crisscrossing. Three times two is six minus one, crisscrossing this way. And then it's very simple just to get the answer. I'm gonna just kind of simplify here. I have a one, this is gonna give me negative seven, so I'll have a negative seven. Uh, then I'll have minus two, this will give me a negative one. And then here I have plus two, and this gives me a five. And so I'll just kind of cruise down here and say negative seven, this is plus two, and this is plus 10. So if I look at that, I have negative seven plus two plus 10. This guy's gonna give me negative five. When I add it to this guy, it's gonna give me a positive five. So the determinant of this matrix is this. Now, look at the work I've done on the board and think about what you would have to do if you did it by row reduction techniques. Row reduction, I would have, uh, to f I have a, a one up here, fortunately, which is good. I'd have to do one step to make these a zero and then another step to make this a zero. And then I would have diagonal elements, I'd multiply, I'd have to make sure I kept track of, of anything out in front. And so for this particular matrix, not too bad, but it's, this is bulletproof because I'm just taking one times the determinant of the submatrix, two times the determinant of the submatrix that's left, two times the determinant of the submatrix that's left. And then finding these determinants are basically very, very simple. Um, so I want you to remember this, we're gonna do a couple more examples here, and keep in, in mind though, that this is useful for finding determinants of three by three matrices, and it's also useful for, for determining the cross product of two vectors in three dimensions, um, which is something that most books don't teach you at all. I'm just gonna teach it to you because I think it's one of the most useful things you can know as a student. All right, so let's go and do the next problem. What if we're gonna find the determinant of this B matrix, and we're gonna say it's negative two, negative three, one, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. We want to find the determinant of this matrix. All right, so we'll say the determinant of B is equal to. It's very simple and it's very bulletproof. You just go across the first row. Negative 2 times the determinant. So I'll put this in parentheses. Negative 2 times the determinant of the submatrix. We cover up this column. We cover up this row. 0, 1, 1, 1. 0, 1, 1, 1. Then you have to remember the minus. The minus goes just because of the procedure. Then we have a negative three here, so you have to keep track. That's a negative three that comes from this times the determinant of what's left over here. Cover up that guy, cover up that guy. You have zero, one, one, one. Zero, one, one, one. Then you have a plus. The final guy is a one times the determinant of the final submatrix. Cover this up, cover this up. You have zero, zero, one, one. 0, 0, 1, 1, like this. So you have this guy times the determinant of the submatrix, this guy times the determinant of the submatrix, don't forget your negative sign, this guy times the determinant of the submatrix. Now, these submatrices are very, very simple to deal with. Okay, so what you have is negative 2, you have, this is a 0, minus 1, 
zero minus one when you do the multiplication. This becomes a plus, so we can make that a plus three. When we do this guy, we're gonna have zero minus one again. And then here, it's gonna be plus one, so we can leave that alone. And then finally, this will be zero minus zero. So we can just put a big fat zero here. So the determinant of B is equal to, this is negative two times negative one, which will give us a two, positive two. This is three times a negative one, so that would give me a negative three, and this is a zero. So the determinant of B is negative one, is negative one. Not very many steps, right? I mean, you could do the row reduction. It's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to think a lot. Do I multiply this row by a number and then I add it? And also keep in mind that these matrices I'm doing to illustrate the technique, they're simple. I have lots of ones. What if I have fractions in there? Two fourths, six sevenths. Yes, you might have determinants with those fractions, but I think it's easier than rewriting the matrix over and over and over and over again and doing all these row reduction steps with a bunch of decimals or something or fractions floating around. All right, and our final guy that we're going to do to illustrate how to find the determinant of a three by three, just to give a little more practice, five, two, three, five, negative one, two, one, two, three. So once you get good at expanding this, um, it's very, very simple. So the determinant of C is equal to, go across the first row, five, times the determinant, and I'll put this in parentheses to keep it straight, times the determinant of the submatrix left over when we cross this guy and cross this guy. So we have negative one, two, two, and three. Negative one, two, two, and three. You have to remember the negative sign for your second term. Then we have a two times the determinant of the submatrix that's left when we cross this guy with this guy. Five, two, one, three. Five, two, one, three. And then we add to it, we have the third guy times the determinant of what's left when we cross this guy out with this guy, we have five, negative one, one, two. Five, negative one, one, two. All right, so we've expanded it. Basically, we call this expanding the determinant about the first row. Okay, so this determinant will be five. And then here we do a crisscross. So we have negative three here minus this gives us four, two times two is four. And then we have the negative two here. This becomes 15 minus this direction becomes two. So you just gotta remember that crisscross, right? And then we have the three inside here, five times two is 10 minus negative one. And I leave it like this so I can remind myself, if you just start doing too many sign manipulations in your head, you'll probably make a mistake. So I'm going to leave it like that. In the next step, then I'll say this is going to be 5 times negative 7, okay? Over here, this is going to be negative 2. On the inside, 15 minus 2 is going to give me 13. And then over here, I'll have a 3, and then 10 minus a minus 1 is 10 plus 1, which is 11, like this. All right? And so what I'm going to have then, 5 times 7 is 35, so this is negative 35. 2 times 13 is 26, so it's negative 26. And then 3 times 11 is 33. So if you do this, and plus this, plus this, you're going to end up with the determinant of matrix C is negative 28. Negative 28. And again, I could have done row reduction. I could have put a 0 here, a 0 here, a 0 here. It would have taken me three, uh, 2 or 3, maybe 4 uh, steps. I would have had to keep track of any modifiers out in front, depending on what steps that I have to do. And in general, when you do it the row reduction way, there's no right way to get to the answer. There's many different ways in which you can do it. So it's, it's, it always works. It's just that it's not going to be consistent between different students. There, people will do it slightly differently, hopefully arriving at the same answer. When you expand it about the first row like this, there's only one way to do it. It's this times this determinant, this times this determinant, this times this determinant. Do not forget, you have to have a negative sign that you insert in that middle guy. So that is how I do my determinants of three by three matrices. If I'm solving a systems of equations in electrical engineering and I've got a matrix here and I need to find the determinant for some reason, uh, to use Kramer's rule for instance that I've covered in my matrix algebra tutor, you need to find the determinant of the matrices. This is how I'm going to find the determinant. I'm never going to bust out row reduction just because I know it always works but I just prefer this. The other uh, a huge advantage to this is I'm going to show you in the next section how to take the cross product of two vectors using this method. And I think once you see that, you will understand why you should commit this to memory. So 
I encourage you to work these, make sure you understand it, follow me to the next section, and I'll show you how to make your life a little bit easier when you're dealing with vectors. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.